Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty, a true note, and welcome to Transport Fever 2, which I've managed to get my hands on just a little bit early, because, basically, if you tell me there's a game about arranging the transport logistics of farmland communities and nearby villages, then basically yes. Just 100% yes. So, what I've done is jump straight into free play mode, because that's how I like to play these things. Campaign mode is fine for learning the ropes, very structured environment, but no, 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 no. I like just having a flipping massive map and I basically can just pick a village and decide to help it prosper. That's how I like to play this thing. And also, thing I really like in Transport Fever 2, you're allowed to mix and match culture groups for towns and vehicles with any form of terrain you want. So on this occasion, I've created a tropical terrain map but populated it with all of the European vehicles and towns. Meaning we can have this lovely rainforest on a mountain next to a beautiful tropical bay. And beside it, we have the village of Otley. And that just entertains me. Beautifully ridiculous British village names. Oh, here we go. Cramlington. That there is a perfect, perfect British name. So, this here is my village. And I'm going to turn these guys into a powerhouse. Whether they want me to or not. And once I start tearing down all of their houses to build more transport infrastructure, it'll probably be not. But screw it, they don't actually get a say. Because you see, we join Kremlington at a terrible, dark time where its population is about to start collapsing because they've got no food and no building materials and everything is terrible. So the population is going to start collapsing down towards 50 any day. Unless I save them, which I'm about to do. So these guys need food and they need bricks. Let's start off with food because bricks you can do without. Food, if you don't have that, you die. So I can see how that would cause a population crisis, yes. And would you believe there's a farm right flipping here? Unfortunately, you can't just put some pigs and a pile of wheat into a truck and ship it into the center of town, dump it in the middle of the crossroads and say, dig in, you filthy peasants. No, they're fussy plebs in Cramlington. They insist the food be prepared first. So fortunately over here, we've got ourselves a food factory. And this is what we need to do. This is what supply chains are all about. We need to provide base food from the farm into the food factory. And then food from the food factory into the centre of town. Absolutely flipping marvellous. Now you're probably thinking, okay, just build a lovely road along here. Job flipping done. No, terrible idea. Roads are expensive and I've only got $10 million, which sounds like a lot, but that will disappear in no time whatsoever. There's already a road leading around to the food factory right here and some other farms nearby. So screw this farm, we might make use of them later. We don't need them just yet. We've already got some lovely big farms right here. So, job number one, start piling some grain into the food factory. Because the food factory right now is just sitting there doing nothing. Because despite the fact it's a food factory, it hasn't actually bothered to arrange delivery of, you know, the raw resources it needs to make food. The people running this factory are not very good at their jobs, but screw it, we're here to help them out, damn it. So for now at least things are going to be on the small side. We'll get into big trains and whatever later. For now, we don't have the money for that. So we need to handle everything through some basic lovely trucks. We're just going to handle this through some road infrastructure. So, truck station. Here we flip and go. So, let's get ourselves a truck station. We want to be uh, ideally as far away from the farm as possible. While still actually, yeah, being in range of it. That'll do right there. Because, yeah, we want the actual distance between the two to be as small as possible. But then again, we also want these guys to be able to uh, screw it. The thing is, yeah, because we know this food factory needs, uh, yeah, two grain per one food, uh, shoveling this place full of grain is gonna be the difficult bit. Plus there's some nice cheap land right here, so screw it, that'll do the job right there. So, that's a couple of truck stops, but we're gonna be needing some trucks. So for that, we're gonna be needing a lovely road depot. So we'll just pop that down here, because yeah, I think we'll be buying a few trucks in this part of the world. We could demolish that and move it elsewhere later. So, two truck stops. Next up, of course, we're gonna be needing some trucks. But first, we need to set up an actual line. This is basically just a series of instructions saying, hey, drive from here to here. So, new line, drive from this spot to this spot, please. Collect the grain from here, dump it right here. Job done. And I'm going to give that a name and a colour. It's going to be orange and it's going to be the farm line. 
Back to the depot, we now buy ourselves a vehicle. So yeah, I've started in 1930. So we're past the age of horse-drawn carriages, because those things are really slow and inefficient and annoying. But we still get some cool, old, styly vehicles. So that's the important thing right there. Here we go. This is all for people, isn't it? Yeah, that's for people. We need trucks to actually transport goods. So this down here is a really good truck, but... It can't transport grain because it's got side stakes, so the grain would just like pour out onto the road. That would be a problem. There is a little truck here, but screw it. Go big or go home. We're going for the big trucks. So buy one of them immediately. And let's actually hang on, hang on, hang on. You need to have a colour, I'd say, my good man. Yes, you're going to be orange, because that's the route you're going to be on. So at a glance, I can tell what you're actually doing. So, you're now orange, set you to a line. Your job is to now go along the farm line. So let's get time ticking along here. And he emerges out of the shed. It's just such a lovely place. You have got the loveliest job in the world, you magnificent bastard. And Jeb, this is my guy. He's just going to drive this truck straight over to the farm. Now, the farmer is a smart cookie. He started figuring out something's going on. So immediately, he started piling his grain down over here, already up to six. Yeah, the truck's only like a fifth of the way there. And already, there's more grain waiting than this truck could physically carry. So we're going to be needing some more trucks. Got it. So that's fine. This is nice and easy to take care of. Back over to my depot here. Because now I've actually got this vehicle set up, I can very easily clone it. So uh, let's just clone that twice. So we've now got three vehicles uh, all immediately getting on with that business. Absolutely beautiful. And I think they'll automatically spread themselves out over time. So, uh, where's my first truck, by the way? He's getting there. He's getting there. It's going to take him a little bit of time. He'd only got 40 kilometers an hour. It's only 1930. But, sooner or later, he'll be grabbing himself some grain and taking it back to the factory. Beautiful. So, yeah, if we want to, we can just speed up some time. Because I don't want to invest any more until I've verified these trucks are making a profit. Which I'm pretty confident they will actually be doing. There we go. You're now on your way, aren't you? Yep, seven out of seven. Lovely. Though, yeah, he definitely is uh, costing me a bit of money. And now he's actually laden. No, he can actually still go at 40 kilometers an hour, even when fully laden. Absolutely marvellous. So there is now... How much is here? Okay, there's already a lot of grain here. Maybe we want even more trucks. If the trucks are going to make a profit, we need even more trucks. And my first truck arrives. I make $12,000. Very, very nice indeed. And the factory immediately bursts into life and starts producing some lovely, lovely foods. And here we go. Straight away, we're actually making a profit on these trucks. So go on. How much actual grain is just floating around here? Still loads. Okay, we're going to be needing some more trucks. Just buy some more trucks. Clone function makes this nice and easy. So uh, get me more vehicles, please. Five trucks just piling grain into this structure. Now, unfortunately, this region appears to potentially be in, yeah, a little bit more trouble than I was expecting. Because you may notice, for the time being at least, the actual food they're producing is not actually being immediately shoved over here, ready to be taken over to town. For the simple reason that, yeah, for the time being, they're not even producing enough to feed their own workers. So apparently this entire territory was just on the verge of a starvation crisis. But don't worry, I'm here to sort it out. They have now produced enough to feed their own workers, and now they can start doing some shipping. Okay, grain piling in and we're making a decent little bit of money just shipping grain over here. But it's time for the bread to start making its way to town. So naturally that means we're going to be needing a brand new line. So start from here and then we're going to need to actually, yeah, ship ourselves some stuff to town. So okay, that means it needs a place to be delivered to. And thankfully a nice truck unload stop means we don't need to tear down their entire town to make room for truck stops, which is a very nice improvement. So uh, just slap that down over... Where do we want that to go? We want it to go where it can actually hit all these territories, so that will be just fine. And as I was saying, please move over to here. Broadway, apparently. Very fancy name for the centre of Cramlington right there. So, uh, we need a truck to take a giant pile of food on what is going to be a fairly long journey. And just to make sure there's no confusion, you can actually specify, yes, I want you to unload bread here and load up bread when you're actually setting off. Just so you understand what you're doing. And yeah, this line is going to have, once again, a colour and a name. 
Here we go. Production is now looking very, very good indeed. They're producing enough. They're happy to start shipping it out. And as a result of that, boxes of prepared food are now just sitting here waiting to be taken into town. Love it. And there she goes, the first ever road vehicle with a completely full cargo of bread setting sail towards Cramlington. Except probably not actually setting sail because she's a truck, not a ship. This is why they don't actually let me handle food distribution logistics in real life. In fact, looking at it, I'd say, yes, we are now actually at max capacity. So, in which case, one of these here trucks, hang on, you, Road Vehicle 7, you are going to be moved onto the food line. Your new job is, in fact, to, yeah, just go and, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go, don't go to town, you haven't got any stuff on you. Go to your depot right now. Now go to the food line. All right. You're going to go and pick up some of this bloody food. And also, you're going to be recolored into yellow so that you match all your friends. In fact, yeah, thinking about it, we've got six trucks delivering grain right now and three delivering bread, which would make sense aside from the fact that bread trucks have to go an awful lot further. So logically, that would mean mathematically, I ought to need... Oh, hang on. No, this has got too complicated for me. I think that means I need, yeah, maybe some more trucks delivering bread. There's definitely some bread starting to back up right here. Still, my yellow trucks are doing a good job grabbing it and shipping it off. Yeah, go on. One more truck just for handling food distribution. So you are just going to go grab that. And now this food factory is looking good. It is happily producing. All right, everything is absolutely lovely. And on top of that, food is starting to get through to Cramlington. Now, technically, Easing World, Fleetwood and Walton on Thames would also like access to food. But screw those guys, they're not Cramlington, so they get nothing. In fact, here comes one of my food delivery trucks right now, right in front of Katie Anderson, inside a rather fantastic little car right there, absolutely lovely. Now, how much is this going to make me? Because also, uh, you need to come down here, then turn around and... Neon signs in 1930. Are we sure about that? Because I'm not sure about that. And uh, in it comes. Uh, and that is going to make me uh, $41,000. Oh yeah, that's the thing. When people are starving to death, you can pretty much charge whatever you want. So there's good money to be made here. Food is ticking up and as a result of that, population is starting to tick up too. And as a result of that, the town's going to start developing, spreading, buildings are going to grow. And sooner or later, Cramlington is going to be beautiful. I mean, it's already powering towards 192 residents. And oh, Right over there, you see. Right over there. Brand new building. New jobs. I have saved Cramlington. Though apparently we've got nowhere near enough trucks delivering food. Okay. As food is actually uh, kind of gathering up at the minute. And, oh, hang on. Production is less than 100. Okay. Production is less than 100. So, we're going to add uh, one more vehicle onto grain delivery. Then we're going to add two more vehicles into uh, colonial vehicles. No, not all the vehicles. Bloody hell. Just one of them. One of them will be fine. Two more vehicles into bread deliveries. That should mean Cramlington is going to be in a good place. And I imagine we should hopefully start making some good money here. In fact, you know what? Go over to finances. So far, we've been making a bit of a loss. But that's because, of course, there's been massive outlays in terms of infrastructure, the trucks and whatever. But I'm going to imagine every single truck is actually making very good money, especially the actual food trucks here. I'm so sorry you're slowing down traffic, by the way. Check the finances here and... Okay, that truck hasn't made any money yet, because that's one of the new trucks. That's fine. One of the existing trucks is... Oh yeah, they're definitely making money. That must have been a truck that was doing the grain run, but is now doing the bread run. And that's where the money is right there. Okay, that's all fine. Okay, next up, Cramlington needs some bricks. Bricks are going to be a bit more complicated. New roads popping into existence there. Okay, who produces bricks? You produce bricks. Great. To produce bricks, you need stone. And, uh, okay, stone is right there as well. Well, that's just bloody convenient, right? Okay, slap down a new road depot in this part of the world. Slap down some new truck stops too. So yeah, we just need to get that as far away from the quarry as we can. There we go. That will save us a tiny bit of time. And then, around the corner over here, 
How far is this in terms of uh, versus Cranlington? Okay, let's just put it on the corner. Round over here, that'll be absolutely fine because, hang on, before we do that, check what the actual ratio is. One to one, fine. So that's not going to be a problem at all. That's just a one to one conversion ratio. Just shove that right there. Lovely. Two more truck stops. Let's just get some trucks out. Start making some stones, shipping it over there. Diddly diddly d. As a base production facility, yeah, the quarry just basically piles out giant piles of stone. That's not going to be a problem. We've already got ourselves uh, one road vehicle there. Let's just get three of them should be fine for the time being. Three will do as a starting point because, yeah, we're going to be needing some stone uh, for these guys. Crownington is up to, uh, okay, 21 out of 60 on food, which is arguably less food than it really, really wants. Any chance we could actually get, yeah your production up. Potentially, if we just keep piling grain into you and keep delivering the food, uh, sooner or later, you might level up a bit. And yeah, first things first, all we need to do is start shoving giant piles of stone into this place. Because for the time being, yeah, we just need to basically get production rolling before there's any bricks to actually ship anywhere. So let's just, yeah, just shove giant piles of stone there. But that shouldn't be so difficult to do. Because uh, with a one-for-one -one conversion rate, it's going to take not that much stone to keep these guys going. Yeah, we've already got plenty of stone right there. That's a good starting point. Bearing in mind, of course, there's no reason not to just buy extra trucks. Because once we've actually got this place running properly, we can just move them over to transporting bricks. How's Cramlington doing, by the way? Getting there. Getting there. Population moving up towards 217. Marvellous. And here we go, the march of technology is starting to deliver more and more advanced trucks, together with, of course, bricks. Because we're moving bricks around with this truck, we can actually use the special truck with the side stakes. Marvellous. Well, obviously, we're having one of them. And here we go, with my first truck on the way to pick up some bricks. Production's looking good. Shipping starting to look good as well. Bricks are being delivered down over here, marvellous, and there is the first red brick truck on its way. Good, 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 good. So momentarily, bricks will be on their way to Cramlington. Don't worry, guys, I got you. Okay, bricks are on the way, but while we're waiting for that, there are other things we can do to help out the mighty metropolis of Cramlington, such as, for example, yeah, public transport. Right now, people have a certain number of destinations available to them privately, i.e. is in range of their car if that's what they want to do, but they have literally zero destinations available to them publicly because there is no public transportation. So we should probably sort that out because that'll help the town grow. So here's how this works. Every single individual person has a home and a job. So what they're going to do is they're going to walk from their home to their job or potentially drive as well, I suppose. Then they're going to come home and at some point they might also go shopping. In general, the journey is always going to be wherever their home is to either work in an industrial zone or shopping in a commercial zone. Here we go. So this individual is not a car owner and thus moves to both shops and work by foot. So let's give them a nice bus to save them a bit of time and in general make them happier. Residential district is clustered around this area. Jobs are up here. Shopping over here. There is a tiny, tiny amount of shopping over here, but screw those guys, don't care. Right, so what we need to do now is get down some lovely, lovely bus stops. Here we go. So a bus stop here will cover a very large amount of housing and also, yeah, provide us with coverage because clearly there's expansion going on down in this direction. Then we just put another bus stop up here, making sure we're in range of all of these here jobs. And yeah, of course, as industry expands, we'll have coverage there as well. And then one final bus stop over here, covering the shops and any future shop expansion. Good, good, good. Okay, brand new bus line. That is going to start off right here on the avenue. Then it's going to take people to work. Then it's going to bring people back home again. Then it's going to go over to shopping. Then it's going to do a loop. So no matter whether people are going to work, back home, shopping, or back home, sooner or later, this bus will do what they want it to do. Oh, and this will do whatever this thing is. Let's buy one of those and we'll just, yeah, check for interest before we buy too many more. Nice green colour, so it matches what we wanted to do. Assign it to bus line. Now, let's see how many people decide to immediately jump on the bus. Oh, I love it. It's basically just a lorry except with some windows and we put people in it. 
Oh, here we go. Ava Green, you are the first person to use a bus. You want to use the bus to go to work and you are wearing a magnificent hat. Well done. You are a pioneer of public transportation. Meanwhile, over at the brick factory, the bricks are starting to pile up. So, okay, that's nice and easy to sort out. How many vehicles uh, do we have right now working this? Not many. Clone a couple more, please. Also, we're really struggling to actually get bread delivered to the city fast enough. Okay, it might be time to start thinking about, yeah, what else we could do here. Because uh, Cramlington needs bread. And despite a huge number of trucks desperately trying to deliver it, it's not getting through fast enough. Let's consider whether, yeah, the cost of all these trucks might be better invested into a train. Because right now we're running six trucks at a cost of $14,000 a year. And sure, they're all in profit. This is all making a very, very healthy profit indeed. But yeah, that's still $90,000 a year to provide trucks, which while they're profitable, aren't even getting the bread through fast enough. We've also got 11 people waiting to use the bus right here. So uh, that bus couldn't even fit all those people on. I believe we've got ourselves, uh, yeah, more people waiting right here. Okay, the bus line is in demand. Uh, clone ourselves at least one more vehicle. Here we go. If we just slide a station in right here, knocking down one building, that has got itself some excellent, excellent coverage. And if we're going to do this, let's flipping do this. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I've got a plan, which is we're going to have a cargo station right here. And then uh, we're also going to start shipping over grain right over here from the farm. Though, hang on. Actually, might be easy to... No, this one's definitely closer. This one's definitely closer. Then again, if I'm going to build a line this way, we could actually use uh, this farm. But then I'd need a double line because, hang on. I might well need a double line anyway if I need to run more than one train. One train might be good enough. Screw it. This is not far. We'll just build ourselves a, a nice little line right here. Terminus here. Terminus here. Normal station here. Link it all together. That's probably going to be expensive, but whatever. Okay, cost about a million dollars or thereabouts. But I'd say that's actually pretty much a flipping bargain. So, uh, we've now got ourselves a line connecting the farms uh, to the town uh, to the food factory. Just a single line, but I've set up some signals. So, uh, hopefully, if I'm running just one train backwards and forwards and all. I'm going to say backwards and forwards. I really hope they do that thing that sometimes happens in these games uh, where when they need to turn around, uh, they can just sort of do it. If not, we'll need to reconfigure slightly. Okay, right this second, there's like, yeah, 30 food and 30 wheat or whatever it is uh, just chilling out. So, uh, we need to have, yeah, a big enough train to handle that much stuff. So, let's get ourselves... Uh, oh, bloody hell, trains are expensive. Okay, let's go for this train. This looks like a nice train. It's a bit pricey, but it looks like it's got, like, some good uh, tractive effort and some good power. Now, unfortunately... I don't know how many actual, you know, things it can pull. Because those just have a weight attached to them. But hopefully, it'll be fine. Yeah, four of these gondolas, they can carry eight each. So, uh, immediately, we'd be moving 32 a go. That would clear out the backlog, no problem whatsoever. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. But then again, maybe we should go for... Let's go for the cheap train. I'm sure this train is fine. Shove on some... Gondolas. There we go. The game's still saying that's fine, so hopefully that's not going to be a problem. So, buy that. Absolutely beautiful. Then again, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If I were to actually set up a train that could do... Uh, ooh, what if a train did uh, both jobs, like my bus line? I mean, uh, it could... Okay, let's actually just have two trains for now. Maybe I'll merge them if they're clearly just sitting around doing nothing. Three million dollars. That's, that's a lot of money. I'm sure it's a good idea. So you are now going to be part of a farm rail. And that means all these here trucks are going to be reassigned to dealing with, uh, yeah, the rock and the quarry. Because uh, bricks are just flipping stacking up here. So we need to actually help get some bricks over there faster. There we go. Bunch of vehicles we don't need anymore have now been sold to get a bit of money back here. So right now, uh, no food is being delivered uh, whatsoever. That's all absolutely a-okay because, uh, yeah, as soon as this train gets out of the way... Oh, here we go. Here comes the first train. 
Here comes the first flipping train, and... Oh, it's beautiful. It's just flipping beautiful. I love it. It is going to be so, so damn good of moving grain around. It's going to be beautiful. And train number two, we just need to give you a good four carriages. That's another three million dollars. I really hope this train line starts making some money, by the way. Because if it doesn't, that's going to be an issue. Also, uh, how much is this actually, you know, costing me? I'm assuming a fair amount. Okay, to confirm, trains are perfectly capable of just teleporting their way out. Good, 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 good. Also, we're... I don't know why we're very slowly demolishing a thing over there. I go to the truck stops. We don't need those anymore. It's fine. Ooh, 78,000. I mean, in all fairness, that's not bad. 78,000. We were paying 90,000 just for the trucks. So actually, if this is only 78,000, I've made a good financial decision here. And there she goes, uh, setting off, full of grain, absolutely beautiful. Not entirely full, but pretty damn close. And yeah, she's allowed to set off because I've set up signals here, so that's fine. You meanwhile have uh, absolutely nothing on board, do you? No, why are you, why are you trying to pick up plastics? Don't pick up plastics. You're supposed to be picking up food, but whatever. Maybe I should put down some extra signals. Yeah, just to be safe, I might put down some, uh, some extra signals. Just so you know, the thing can actually set off and all of that good stuff. Okay, the food factory is also consuming small amounts of food to, like, feed its own workers or whatever. But now, 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 uh, the grain has arrived. Here you flipping go. Have all the flipping grain in the world. And now you are hopefully going to, yes, flip yourself around, uh, head off in that direction. So that, that's going to produce a very large amount of bread. Good. Now, how quickly is the grain actually stacking up? Oh. Okay, already 35, 36. Okay, this is a useful thing to know. How quickly can grain be got onto the platform? Because uh, we want the train to have as many carriages as are necessary to take literally all of the grain. So by the time you actually get back here, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's going to be more like, what, 45 to 50. And that would logically mean about 25 bread. So this train should be fine. Then again, this train's going a lot further. So, okay, we'll need to keep an eye on that too. That's all absolutely fine. Over here we've got ourselves. Yeah, it's going to be about 50. So logically, I need another two things on the back of my train. And that should just about fly. So after the next delivery, I'll send you back to the depot. And we'll add a couple of extra trucks onto you. But this will do as a starting point. That's pretty solid. Because, yeah, this place has now actually run out of grain. So we need to provide more grain to this place faster. Otherwise, it's not producing bread. And we need to get nice, efficient stuff going on here. Yeah, there's ten loaves right now. The train is... Uh, this train is still actually coming up to this area. So I'm guessing these days... Yeah, sorry, I sort of accidentally cut off your bread supply there. Didn't really mean to. Sort of an accident. Okay, grain gets delivered. Giant piles of money are made. Now you, go back to the depot, please. I would like you to return to the depot. We need to make some changes. I.e. adding on, maybe for safety, three extra carriages. Add some additional gondolas. Apparently the power's still looking good. It could still go pretty darn fast. 56 capacity. That should be just fine. So modify that for, oh, that's another million dollars. Okay, um, this really needs to work now because uh, we're kind of out of everything. So, uh, deploy you back onto uh, the farm rail now. You should now have an extra, yeah, an extra few carriages on you, uh, which will be absolutely marvellous. Here you come with, uh, oh yeah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff right now. Now, now you've got a train longer than technically ought to actually fit inside the depot, but whatever, it's a TARDIS. Okay, now this train so far has admittedly been costing us a lot of money and not actually making much. Because it just went on a bit of a joyride just to check that, you know, the railway was working correctly. But now, now there's bread waiting. All right, how much bread is there waiting? Pretty much bang on the right amount. So this was good at least.
Oh, and that's good. This train is absolutely flipping full up of grain. Because I've set up signals, it can actually make its way most of the way along the line. That's absolutely fine. You pick up the bread, vacate the station, more grain coming in. This factory is going to be working flipping overtime. So yeah, 26 bread. I think we've got capacity for 32. Okay, so we can take literally all of the bread in one go, ship it over to town. It should arrive much faster because, yeah, this is one, more of a straight line, and two, trains travel faster than trucks. So uh, this should mean bread is getting through faster. Meanwhile, huge numbers of trucks have actually been repurposed to deal with the brick situation. So hopefully, plenty more bricks will start being shipped over to town very, very fast indeed. Oh, we are looking at an economic boom. Cramlington, uh, we're going to be... Oh, look at this. Look at all these extra houses. This is beautiful. And we just made one a hell of a big old pile of money. Okay, let's check your finances here. Oh, flip. This train is already in profit. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Admittedly, it's a fairly modest profit for the fact I've managed to burn, like, you know, $9 million of investment. But the important thing is we've got a flipping train. I will say it's sad that you can't formally ride along with it inside the carriage, but it is nice that you really can get, yeah, very low down to the ground in this game. So you can sort of ride along with it in this weird, beautiful, tropical England I've set up. Oh, that's cute. The station even actually has a sign with the right town name on it. That's adorable. Right, guys, I know there's been a bit of a shortage of bread, but you guys are about to be flipping swimming in bread. All right, the bus service seems to be doing... Okay, there are people waiting, but it's not too bad. I think we're okay for the time being. Here comes the bread, you magnificent bastards. You're welcome, basically. $282,000. Nice. So the bread has been delivered. Immediately that jumps right the flip up. Beautiful. How are we doing over here, by the way? We've got ourselves... Oh, that, that looks like more bread. Okay, there's... 24 loaves are already waiting. And uh, food is just flipping, piling up here. Wow, there's 60 grain stored. Okay, now this is good. These guys have definitely got enough grain. Because I was about to suggest, if they need more grain, then what it could do is, uh, yeah, reconfigure this train to have the type of carriages that can hold anything. Then, I could ship some of this grain back again. So it's not a wasted trip on the return. But... I feel like, yeah, the problem is not actually going to be a lack of grain. Then again, keep an eye on this. Let's see if the grain runs out before you return with more grain. Because there's now, yeah, 35 grain and rising. So, I think the grain is not an issue. Can confirm, the grain is not running out. So, okay, we do not need to be shipping additional grain to the factory. It physically can't keep up with the amount of grain I'm already sending it. How much food is actually... 46. Okay, so if there's now 46 food that's appeared, that means we need, yeah, we need to shove more oom. We can't really afford much in the way of more, uh, yeah, things for this train, but hang on, how much, how much does a new carriage cost in theory? Because, uh, yeah, that's 32 right there. Also, can I just actually borrow some more money? Any chance I can just, um, borrow some more money by any chance. I'm not seeing a button. Okay, we could afford to shove an extra couple of boxcars on. Now that we know, in the time of an average journey, about 50 bread can be produced, that there would be a good thing to do. So you head back to the depot for the time being. We're going to add a couple more things onto you, then we'll pick up all this delicious food. Okay, Add two additional boxcars, please. That can handle bread. Great. 48 capacity, just what we want. Though, uh, do make sure it's all yellow, please. Thank you. Yes, pay for that. Now, recolor it all yellow. There we go. Now it's all yellow. Now, now you can be put back on the food line, please. We are down to $114,000, which does make me, um, nervous. I'm not gonna deny 104,000. 135,000. Okay, the next time a big delivery of grain arrives, uh, that'll be fine. 35,000. Okay, um, 
Pick up. Yep, the food's been picked up. 57,000 will be fine just as soon as this grain arrives. Because I don't know what happens when you hit zero. I don't know if that's game over. Really hope 45,000. Please hurry up and deliver the grain. We're, um, we're very low on money right now. And any, any time you're ready. Any time you're ready to deliver that grain. And okay, we're, we're in a small amount of debt. It seems there's not enough money. It's possible to take up. So is it? Okay, that's great. But we just made some money back. We just made some money back. Does anyone know where the loan button is? Oh, there we go. In fact, actually... I could borrow another $20 million. Okay, just borrow half a million for now. Just a small half a million dollars just to keep me going. Okay, that there, that should be plenty of food, hopefully. But the thing is, this train is flipping killing it. This train is making big, big piles of profit. Just shipping grain over to the food factory. That, as it turns out, is an excellent, excellent thing to do. And even better, Cramlington is now flipping swimming in bricks. The bricks are getting through. Though people are desperate to use the bus service, so... Uh, okay, hang on. We need some more buses. That's all absolutely fine. Just get us... Uh, one more should be okay. Oh, here we go. This is the big moment right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the bread train has arrived. And with that, I am going to make... A very big amount of money. Was that like half a million dollars? I think that was half a million dollars. Okay, so, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. And that gets this place straight up to... Oh, look at that. Plus 60% growth off the bread. Plus 70% off the bricks. We are in good flipping shape. Okay, what else can we do to help here? Because, uh, right. This is showing me how private transport is being used. And there is... Uh, a fairly heavy amount of usage going in this direction towards Colburn. So people want to go to Colburn, presumably to... Well, actually, hang on. We can check. We can literally see. So you, my good man, you're driving to Colburn. Why are you doing that? Aha! Destination home. You're not driving to Colburn to visit. You literally live in Colburn and you come here to work because there aren't enough jobs in Colburn because I even decided Colburn is the most important place in the world. So in theory, if I was to set up a dedicated bus line purely to take people over in this direction, yeah, over to uh, Colburn, I mean, might not be a terrible idea to actually have, you know, a proper designated rail line, but that'd be very, uh, very expensive. So maybe we don't do that immediately. How are we doing here, by the way? How much bread is uh, waiting for me? 38 coming up towards 40. Uh, capacity 40. Ah, oh, flipping nailing it right here. Okay. Meanwhile, the amount of grain is 13 going up. Perfect. Absolutely spot on. These trains are now doing an excellent job. How are you doing in terms of finances? Okay. You made a loss last year, but now, now you're making good money. Excellent. Ah, here we go. The Crownington Town Overview can actually tell me nearby destinations. So, uh, yeah. 17 people are going to Colburn to shop. 16, or now just 15 this second, uh, are going to work. So, uh, yeah. A single simple bus line might actually be able to sort that out nice and easy. And hello. A manufacturing industry has apparently upgraded. Oh. Oh, is it my beautiful factory? It's my factory. Oh. My factory is all in the blue. Production is through the roof. Things are being shipped. They are being transported. Don't worry, guys. I got you. So this place is going to start getting bigger very, very soon indeed. Oh, I love it. Oh, here we go. We're almost up to the next level. I don't know what happens. Oh, it just got bigger. Yes, it just got bigger. Oh, yeah. Now this... This is good stuff. So, 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 so. Does that mean it can now produce food faster? Because if so, we might need to expand the trains a bit. Okay, as per plan, we had just enough capacity on the train to take everything. But now, now it's gonna start, yeah, making some more stuff. And, uh, okay, there's only, there's only three grain. Oh, that, that feels faster. Okay, that's fine. The grain train is here, guys, but do I now need to build more infrastructure to deliver you more grain to actually keep up with your new higher level of production? 
because I suspect that's precisely what's going on here. Okay, so let's see if that grain runs out before this train comes back, because if it does, uh, then we might need to, uh, yeah, start making use of this farm down over here. Oh yeah, the grain is gone before you even make it to that station. Okay, so, 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 you are now a production flipping powerhouse, got it, and that makes sense, there's literally two factories. Well, okay then, if that's the game you want to play, we can play that flipping game. Unfortunately, there are no containers that can carry both grain and food, it's just not allowed, so, okay. I can't do my original plan of just shipping stuff back at the same time, though that's not to say, of course, this plan wouldn't in theory work. All we need to do is, yeah, have a second train going along this line at the same time. So that would need to be a double line, but if I'm going to be building a double line all the way along, what's the point? I might actually find it cheaper just to build a new line along here from down in this direction. In fact, that's almost certainly a better idea. Now, we will need to borrow a bit more money to make this happen, but we've already established this here is an excellent way to make money, so it's fine. Also, ooh, headquarters, you say? Oh, that's pretty sad headquarters, to be honest. I was expecting a massive building, but no, it's just a shack. And apparently we just go outside and... Is that a... No, that's probably a way of drawing water. It's not actually a bathtub. I like to think it's a bathtub, though. I just enjoy going outside and washing in front of the filthy plebs who I feed and clothe. Also, there's a really nice spot for this right here. Yes, yeah, screw it. We're going to put it right here in the middle of the residential district. And, oh, look at this. Look at this. We've actually got flipping skyscrapers. I want to say skyscrapers. There's... Okay, 16 people live in this building. 16! Yes, indeed, there are 16 floors. So, every single one of these people has a floor to themselves. That's bloody decadent. Okay, just vaguely finger in the air here. This distance here is... Uh, I'd say slightly shorter than this distance here. And this train had, uh, what was it? Uh, seven and you were able to keep up with that. Yeah, there we go. Seven trucks and you were just about keeping up with that. So uh, maybe, as that's definitely going to be a longer journey, we go for eight. Because yeah, this was about six and a half. Oh, hang on. I think the old train I was using has been retired. Yes, technology has moved on. So we need to move up to the next train here. That train is, I believe, just a tiny bit faster, so uh, hopefully that means 8 will be fine. Ah, hang on. That's too much. That becomes uh, mediocre. Okay, so yeah, I'm guessing that means this train is uh, not actually strong enough to pull all the stuff I need it to pull. Because power, yeah, power's not good enough. This thing is... Uh, more expensive, but would be able to pull the things I need it to pull. And it's probably, uh, yeah, the cheapest option we've got. Okay, this is seriously overkill, just for grain, but screw it, it's fine. Oh, here she comes. Uh, down the beautiful bay frontier, down towards the brand new farms. That's now got itself, yeah, about 70-odd grain there. You can hold 64, but we did have a bit of a snafu with some trains getting stuck against trains. So normally it wouldn't be that much. This feels good to me. This is a lot of flipping grain. We can start picking up, dumping into here. Everything should be good, hopefully. Now the problem we've got here is this presumably means the amount of actual bread that's been produced is also being doubled. Now I can't just add more carriages to this thing, because as we've established, this thing is, yeah not going to actually be able to pull it. But that's fine. We should have, yeah, more grain arriving momentarily. That's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. Population holding steady at about 321 residents right now. That's good stuff right there. If I simply sell this train and then buy a new one, one that's much better at carrying giant, giant piles of bread, that should do the job pretty well. Okay, here we go. The new grain deliveries are coming in. Now, there's no chance whatsoever you're going to be flipping running out of grain anytime soon. Alright, there is half a million dollars worth of grain and there's another half a million dollars coming right now. So you just naff off back down to your farm, you now enter the station, give them even more. So at this point, at this flipping point, you can take your stuff into your factory as quickly as you like alright. It ain't going to be a problem. There we go. So, you've now got a store of about 80. It's going down fast, but 
The blue is already most of the way down to... Oh, yeah. Now there's more stuff coming in too. And we just about eyeballed the amount of carriages we need there correctly. Good. Good, 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 good. Now, the problem is... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. So, there's 50 food right now. I suspect this is going to be the last time we use you. So you're okay for the time being, because yeah, there's only 50 odd, but the next time you come back, I suspect there's going to be way too much for you to carry. And more importantly, okay, we just about kept up with supply there. Maybe this place shut down for just a second, but it was indeed for just a second. So we're getting enough grain through. All right, the grain must flipping flow. Yeah, we deliver about 90 odd in a shipment, and the trains seem to arrive broadly simultaneously right now. Okay, so uh, that bread is now being delivered. Uh, Cramlington is looking good. Plenty more bread about to arrive momentarily. This place is now, uh, yeah, 47, uh, 45. Uh, okay, is it going to run dry? Is it going to run dry before another train arrives? And it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be really flipping tight, but no, I think actually, yeah, the trains are actually by accident pretty much synchronized just because this one always gets in just first. There we go. Boom. Okay, we are now providing enough grain that this place will keep producing indefinitely. So, that's good. The problem is, it's already up to 56 food and uh, yeah, you're not actually, um, you're not actually back yet. Okay, so, at the point when you would have arrived into the station, let's check how much bread is actually here. And the answer is, yeah, you're just arriving now, but that's fine. We'll divert you to the depot momentarily. 66. It's a lot of bread. And that's definitely more than you can handle. So, uh, we need to make some changes here. Number one, sell the train. Yep, yeah, just get rid of that. So we actually get a massive refund because that train was pretty new and in good condition. We need to be able to carry about 66 odd bread to town. Okay, so who can handle that? Because we're going to need a really, really big, strong train. This one I just bought for the grain run actually should do just fine. Yeah, a thousand power. That should be more than enough. And 100 kilometers an hour, I mean, actually it's going... Uh, yeah, it's making it there about 10% faster too. So uh, we need to potentially factor that in. Okay, 66 should be good enough. What's the biggest thing we've got that can carry bread? I think it's still uh, the box car, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. So, uh, 8 should do, because 8 times 8 is 64. So, uh, that should be about right. Factoring in, the train is now going 10% faster. Can you actually get 8 on, by the way? And, uh, yes, yes you can. Marvellous, it's... It's a bit on the expensive side, but screw it, you've got to spend money to make money. Maybe one more just for safety. Oh, here she comes. Coloured yellow to represent the food line. A massive new faster train together with nine box cars just for safety. Oh, oh, this is, this is good. This is good. Oh, look at that. Look at all of that. Okay, so 69 food, sorry, 70 food. Is now in play, and we can take absolutely flipping. Okay, we've got we've got a small problem. We've got a small problem. Why didn't you wait at the? Oh, yeah, these signals. Okay, I I see the problem. I see the problem. Um, reverse, please. Yes. Now, um, how do I tell you to just go somewhere? I. I don't know. Okay, um... If I were to reset your... Oh, bloody hell. Yes, the mistake was these signals. Because if these signals weren't there, he'd have been forced to wait at these signals, which definitely would have been better. Okay, I'm going to be honest. What you're looking at right now is the result of the fact that I was trying to click on the train to verify that everything was as it should do, but I previously deleted the train signals to get rid of them, but I was still in delete mode. So I just deleted a track with a train on it, and now the train is an invisible smoke monster. I don't actually know what happens now, but I feel like I've just made a horrible, horrible mistake. Okay, I restored the track and fortunately, everything's fine. Aside from the fact this train sort of 
inside itself. But now, now reverse, please. So now turn yourself around, and then as soon as you can, I want you to... Yes, now go into the station. Okay, that, that worked out better than I thought it was going to. Oh, we just made a million dollars off that bread delivery, which is actually also going to put... Yeah, there we go, plus 70% growth right there. Cramlington, a bustling metropolis of 300 people. Towers are just being thrown up all over the shop right now. It's beautiful. Okay, the train makes it back. On this occasion, it only picks up 47, but there was a bit of a, um, a kerfuffle. So, uh, that's absolutely fine. Right there. We know that that's a thing. So, yeah, this is now being converted uh, nice and fast. More grain shows up, and actually, things are more spaced out now, so this actually sort of works. So, uh, Okay, the next trip, now we've sorted out the signalling problems, uh, should run a lot more smoothly. Because long before you run out of grain now, uh, the blue train arrives uh, with a giant pile of additional grain, and there we go. Now, now you can just keep producing indefinitely. Up to 80, uh, more grain is coming in. Uh, right, so if anything, we might actually be um slightly over delivering uh, Grain. But there will be a minor interruption when this train gets back. So everything should hopefully be okay. We're up to uh, 33, 34, 35. Okay, that's definitely being produced nice and fast. And you're actually on your way back right now. Oh, we, we may have slightly overestimated how quickly this place is capable of producing. I mean, up to 43, 44, 45. Oh, it's only like... Okay, I massively, massively overestimated how much I actually needed on this train. Possibly this train is faster than I was anticipating. I think it's actually a lot faster than the last one. Here we go, the new signalling system is working. Because now, the yellow train waits here before the blue train naffs off. Okay, now, here's the tricky bit, which is uh, this food processing plant. If I wanted to get it up to level 3, I'd need to get shipping up to its top level over there. Now, uh, that represents the volume of units shipped on an annual basis. But the thing is, uh, I think I'm shipping literally everything this place is producing when it's constantly being supplied with grain, and it's only representing about 90 uh, making it through. Because, uh, yeah, this journey, you know, it takes a while. Which would suggest, yeah, approximately two deliveries a year actually make it through. Which, given how fast time's ticking down on the bottom right there, yeah, that feels about right, actually. Two bread deliveries a year, but it's a flip load of bread, so it's fine. So, Crownington's doing good on the bread front. That's great, but, yeah, how would we ship more than what's actually being... Oh, I'd need to ship it somewhere closer... Or I'd need to ship it faster. Because, wait, hang on. Shipping it closer would... No, that would mean... Well, if I could make more journeys, then I'd just be delivering less per journey. Wait, hang on. No, this is too much maths for me. Because sure, I could also be shipping to Easingwold or Walton-on-Thames. But there's no bread to ship. I'm shipping as much bread as there is. Also, I've just spotted something about the bus line, which is, uh, yeah, housing's expanded down over here, so a few houses, just a handful, aren't actually covered. So, okay, we can fix that. We just need to put a brand new stop around here somewhere, just to provide some extra coverage. Then, we'll just weave that in to the existing route. So, bus line, all we do is, yeah, add a station onto... Uh, the end over there because you're going back to the avenue after going to north road regardless so uh, you may as well pick some people up there while you're passing by and speaking of which i think yeah this thing could actually do with just a bit more capacity so uh send some extra oh yeah definitely send some extra people in there's people are starting to queue for the buses they are enjoying the buses in fact are there better buses could we actually get better buses doing this oh look at that capacity of 10 it's a faster bus. Screw it, put a- no, don't put a faster bus in. If I put a faster bus in, then all that's gonna do is get caught behind the existing buses. So we don't want to do that. Just use the existing buses, they're not expensive, just bring some more in, alright? Massively increase 
the number of buses. Oh yeah, and that new bus stop, immediately uh, people are queuing down for that. So that is good. That's really good. Aeroplanes, you say? I mean, we could build an airport. We shouldn't build an airport. Do not build an airport. Okay, so I built an airport, and I'm going to be honest, I had to borrow a lot of money to make it happen. Because to get the airport close enough to people that they'd actually use it, I needed to demolish, like, a lot of homes. There were a lot of really unhappy people. In general, it probably wasn't a good idea. Then I realised, of course, one airport isn't really any good. Because with one airport, you can't fly anywhere. So obviously, as we know 20 people a year go over to Colborne for some light shopping, I thought I'd build an airport over there as well. So as a result of that, now those people can fly instead of drive. This arguably was not a good investment. So, Cramlington sidings go over to... There we go. Oh, look at that. There's a proper little ascent, descent, and... I really hope that's the actually. I don't know whether that's going up or down to us. That looks kind of scary, all right? Maybe the pilot shouldn't be doing anything, you know, that steep. Also, I thought the names were a bit on the grim side. So that's now Welcome to Colburn Airport. And this over here is Yay for John Airport. So everyone will know it was thanks to me that they have an airport. And also that it was sort of, you know, my fault. Though bear in mind, we do have a bustling to... Oh, that's, that's a good point. I didn't need to demolish all of those houses... I could have just, you know, built a bus stop outside the airport and everyone would have just used the... Okay, so a lot of people are homeless for no reason. But on the plus side, John Air is ready to go. You know, I was going to go for the smallest plane, but I'm going to be honest, planes are cheaper than I was expecting. I thought this was going to be impossible, but no, the cheapest one is tiny, but it's only actually got three people on board. Okay, this one goes up to five for half a million. Eight, seven thousand a year. That is nothing in the grand scheme of things. That one's more like two million. Yeah, that's good. That one's shiny. And I think I've heard of a Douglas before. So, uh, yes, that's the one we want. Because also, oh yeah, it's a lot faster. That's a lot faster. That will pay for itself. And it's going to be a sort of hot pink purple. Because I'm the one that sets it up. And there we go. Actually, you know what? John Air should also be... Hang on, hang on, hang on. John Air should also be hot pink and purple. You're not wrong. Oh, that's better. Now, where is... Oh, there she is. There she flipping is. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. The Soaring John is ready for action. Now, which of you lucky bastards wants to be the first to get aboard the Soaring John? Anybody? Anybody at all? Okay, yes, we do indeed have nobody's on board. Okay, we're setting off anyway, but I'm sure sooner or later, somebody will want to use this airport. I will say for a transport game, it's very pretty. Oh, there she goes. There goes the Soaring John taking off from Yay for John Airport. And hopefully she can actually take off. Anytime you're ready. Anytime you're ready. Oh, there she goes. There she flipping goes. And now she's just going to fly around. I'm assuming this is this is going to be very expensive. It's going to be very expensive indeed. That, that was quite a steep ascent, but whatever. Okay, no one's on board right now. But sooner or later, we have established people do want to go to Colburn. Okay, so if they want to come to Colburn, they will use the airport, hopefully. Yes, we've got one. Katie Hall has decided she is going to go shopping via John Air. So she wants to go shopping to Colborne and she doesn't want to flipping drive like a pleb. No, 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 no. She shall fly there in style in a shiny metallic and hot pink plane. Oh, Flip, the people of Colborne are just desperate to get on this plane. Yes, yes, this has been a success. I think possibly it's because, yeah, Colburn is a terrifying nightmare, which doesn't actually have access to, um, food or any infrastructure whatsoever. So I imagine, yeah, in the Colburn to Cranlington direction, it's more like people desperately fleeing. But in terms of Cranlington to Colburn, oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. People coming in, just have a little bit of a looksy round, tourism, shopping, all the good stuff. And in she comes. Oh, everybody, everybody wants to get the hell out of Colburn. And why wouldn't they? Cramlington is the place to be. In fact, this does actually help out the town. It wasn't just a vanity project. 
because this has massively increased the number of places that people are able to visit, which further boosts the growth of the town. Here we go, the Soaring John comes in. We've actually got ourselves 13 people waiting. Well, I'm so sorry, guys. There's not actually space for all of you. You'll have to wait for the next trip. So, uh, the Soaring John... Is there actually little pilots in there? There is! There's a tiny, tiny pair of pilots. That's adorable. In fact, can you actually even see the passengers? I think you might just be able to. It's a bit hard to see, but I think you might just be able to make them out there. And Oh, hang on. Yes! They are actually... Oh, hang on. There's... There's way more than 10 seats in there. Why are we only selling 10 seats? There's blatantly more than 10 seats. There's like... Yeah, it's three in a row, and there's... Hang the flip on here. We could fit way more than 10 people on. Come back. Oh, Katie Hall has started a movement. People are just rushing to shop in Colburn right now. The age of air travel has arrived. Unfortunately, we have a very reliable source of money to fund my ludicrously expensive white elephant, which is the food train. So we can just bring in food, sell it at ridiculously high prices, Oh, look at the industry. The industry is starting to actually tech up too. That's beautiful. There's like a million dollars for food. Absolutely flipping lovely. How's this place getting along, by the way? That is... Uh, yeah, 24 right now. Okay, yes, I massively overestimated the food problem. But this is looking good. Food is slowly getting in faster. All right, this is good. Cramlington is in good shape. Oh, and there she is, the Soaring John, heading back to Cramlington. Marvellous. You know, with nine people waiting, if anything, we might want to potentially introduce a brand new flipping plane onto this route. All right, one plane might not be enough. Also, has anyone verified how much do we actually charge for tickets and when does it get paid? Because typically in this game, money is handed over when the destination is reached. So, okay. Oh, 175,000. That's... It's not much, really, is it? That that feels like not much. That feels like not much at all, given how much does this thing cost to run? Oh, 71,000. Oh, flip, I've actually got profitable air travel. Ha, you thought I was going to bankrupt myself, but no, I've accidentally invented an incredibly profitable new form of tourism. Oh, flip me, that plane is actually making some really, really big profits. Okay, admittedly, the infrastructure did cost a bit to set up, but actually, 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 okay, we just need more upfront money, okay, that's all we need, we need more upfront money to buy more planes, okay, as soon as the grain train comes in, we should be able to hopefully just afford, yes, we can just afford another plane, okay, that's good, hang on, where's, where's the existing plane, does anyone know where the plane is? It has just left. Okay, so right, 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 right. We just need to get ourselves uh, more planes. In fact, if anything, we need we need bigger planes. We need more planes. Okay, that's what we need to do. This one is... Oh, that's just freight, unfortunately. Yes, that's boring. We don't want freight. We need... I mean, I'd love to be able to buy this massive one, but I guess we have to make do with just the Douglas. Okay, I can... Oh, I can't... Quite afford it. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can I, can I basically tell the game I want to afford that? And error, not enough money. Okay, I was briefly able to afford it, but then somebody insisted on like, I don't know, taking some money to fund the existing infrastructure or something. Hang on. Okay, the moment the grain train gets in, pause the game. If we go into debt afterwards, that's a price I'm willing to pay and... Come on, that's got to be worth 1.6. Oh, hang on, is that not enough? Is that enough? I think we're really teetering on the edge of bankruptcy right now. Okay, when I say air is making good money, what I mean is it managed to lose, yeah, just shy of $800,000 last year. But the thing is, uh, the tickets are making good money. And the vehicles do not cost that much to maintain. The problem is the infrastructure. Running at two airports purely to support one plane. So if you think about it, if I increase the number of planes, then actually, 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 we'd be able to do it. There we go. There's $2 million. Right, get more planes out. Plane number two, the Glorious John, is on its way to welcome to Colborne Airport. And uh, 
We still have, we have so many people queuing right now. Okay, we need more aeroplanes. Admittedly, we are, we're slightly in debt right now. We are a little bit in debt. But soon, we can start extorting people for food in Cramlington. Then, we'll be fine. The thing is, every single plane is basically just a license to print money. If I had more planes, I'd make more money. The key is just to spend all of the money we've got on more planes. Okay, so the debt's getting a bit out of hand right now, so we need to make some savings. Like, for example, this train right here. We don't need all of these here boxcars. Alright, we can actually... When you say... I don't need to... I don't need to buy a vehicle when I'm getting rid of a... Do I get that money or... Okay, I get that money. Good. Good, good, good. That's marvellous. Yes, I know I'm in debt. Because as we've established, yeah, actually, 56 capacity is just fine. So I'm saving myself... Hang on, how much am I saving myself here? I'm saving myself... Okay, like a hundred thousand dollars a year that's not nothing oh hang on i've just realized i can borrow a lot more money than i thought i could okay there's oh wow right well this has solved all my problems okay okay get it down to uh, 70 million dollars okay now with an extra 40 million dollars we've got 50 people waiting right now well good news guys yes so many aeroplanes now that's more like it. Five planes just soaring through the flipping skies. Okay, I may have got overexcited and overpurchased aeroplanes. Because now planes are setting off with only like one person on board. Okay, I've spread out the planes and I've reduced the number to four. So there is an entire capacity across the network of about 40 people, which appears to be about right. Now when I say I've spread them out, there's still a tiny tiny bit clustered but i'm feeling like actually four just about does it now the question is as i can't go to five is there enough value in the tickets to actually make this work okay so far in 1954 it's been surprisingly close in fact hang on hang the flip on here oh my goodness air travel is it's making a profit it's actually making a flipping profit. Okay, but, 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 that was just providing air travel to Colburn, which was a tiny, tiny, insignificant place that no one actually really wanted to go to anyway. What would happen instead if we offered air travel to a place that people physically can't get to by road because it's too far away? What would happen, in fact, if we were to open up air travel to some of these bustling metropolises up here? Okay, I've been over all the towns. This here, Newport, this is the biggest town going. I've not been bothering to support it in any way, but apparently it's doing just fine by itself. Oh, there is a perfect spot for an airfield right here too. We only have to demolish our handful of buildings. Oh yeah, now this. This here. This is going to be my magnum opus. Okay, Newport is a lot further away, so we're going to be needing some faster planes for this business. Here we go, the Douglas DC-4. 15 people on board for only $3 million. Absolute flipping bargain. Oh, look at her. She's beautiful. Now, how many of you fragile peasants are immediately up for going to Newport. Okay, none of you. Well, screw you then. We're just gonna naff off. We'll come back later when you've got some better flipping taste. All right, because I've been over in Newport. I've been over in Newport. They're already flipping queuing to get out. Okay, not yet, but any minute. All right, that's what they said about Colburn. They said it was never gonna catch on in Colburn, but it did. Oh, there we go. They're starting to queue. They're starting to queue already. People want to go, and uh, this is a good thing. We need to have more flights to more destinations to make paying for the airports actually worth it. And, oh, there's already, uh, there's already a bunch of people here. Where's the plane? Where's the plane, by the way? Does anyone know where the... Where is the plane? I don't know. It's somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. It's already actually arrived. Okay. So, oh, this is perfect. The plane has arrived just in time to pick up literally all 15 people that showed up for the first flight. So, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we actually let you fussy plebs on board, by the way, I need to actually check here. 
Okay, there's definitely room for more than 15 people. Again, this plate is definitely bigger than you giving it credits. Oh yeah, just look in here. There's flipping two seats either side of the aisle. There's loads of space. This is nowhere near capacity. Oh, and there's more people. Oh, it's catching on. It's catching the flip on. Yes, people want to attend John Air 2. Well, all right then. I guess there shall be more planes. Oh yeah, people are flipping desperate. Desperate to get to Newport because they've never been able to go there before and there's no way to get there other than by air. Oh, this is this is working so well. This is working even better than I expected. Okay, so John Air and John Air 2 are now both flying four planes backwards and forwards, which seems to be about the right amount. There are healthy queues, so they're not getting out of control, which is good. That's the happy middle ground right there. So the big question is, in the year 1957, which form of transport is going to make the most profit? Because I suspect my planes are going to start doing the flipping job. And oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. Already half a million dollars in profits. In fact, what on earth happened to the trains? The trains used to make tons of money. What's, what's wrong with the trains? And are you guys okay? Oh, hang on. I think it's just that the first grain delivery hadn't actually come in yet, and that was kind of what was keeping the trains going. Yes, I suspect momentarily the trains are going to be looking... Yes, the trains now look much better. Oh, this is just embarrassing. Both the trains and the planes are being completely owned by the humble bus service right now, just because it's really, really cheap to maintain. So as a result of that, the bus services... Oh, we're... We're right on the edge right now. We're right on the flipping edge. Okay, there's more planes coming in. All right, there's a healthy queue of people. All right, we should be making uh, we should be making some good money. Oh, coming into October. Only two months left. Only two months left. There's 175,000. But then again, we had to pay for, you know, maintaining the airport. Which strikes me as, you know, not difficult. It's long and flat. Just send someone around it with a brush, for goodness sake. But apparently it is... Oh, it was briefly 380. Then it actually uh, dropped off again. Oh, no, the bosses are gonna win, aren't they? And, oh, hang on, hang on, no, no, yes! The planes have actually just won! The planes just won! Admittedly, they cheated. They did cheat because literally on December 30th, one plane pulled up over here, and I think another one pulled up over somewhere else too, and a giant pile of passengers just, like, got on at the exact right moment so that the actual tickets came in just at the right second. So... In some ways, uh, that was a little bit unfair, but you can't deny I have managed to turn a decent profit with my new airport system. Admittedly, I had to borrow $57 million to make it happen. That's certainly true. And uh, you may also notice that the loan interest is actually greater than the amount of profit I'm making from air. So if you were to look at it that way, you could say, actually, I'm making a loss. And had I just built a bus service, I'd actually be making more money right now. You could say that if you were boring, but I have got my own airline. So basically, I flipping win. And you know who else wins? The people of Cramlington. They win. Do you remember how tiny Cramlington was when we began? It was nothing. But now, now there are skyscrapers where people have entire floors to themselves. That is the level of opulent decadence that I have created in this society. You are welcome, Cramlington. And as my society grows and prospers, I think you get the point. This here is Transport Fever 2 and oh, this is just my cup of tea. This is wonderful and this is lovely and I've had an absolutely lovely time playing this for hours and hours and hours and it's just wonderful. I will say though, I did play the original Transport Fever not that long ago. It's very similar. It's a lot prettier. There's been some quality of life improvements, but it's not a million miles apart from the original Transport Fever. But then... I really enjoyed the original Transport Fever, so I guess if the worst criticism I can come up with is it's very similar to a game that was already really, really good, then that's not really much of a criticism at all. But something perhaps to keep in mind. I suspect we might well see this again, ladies and gentlemen. I do enjoy doing this sort of thing in a live stream, so... Uh... Keep your eyes open. We might well be seeing this sooner rather than later. Link in the description below in case you're interested. I think this isn't actually out yet. This was a version I was able to get my hands on just a little bit early. So, might well be worth a look -see when it does come out very, very soon indeed. And yes, I suspect we'll be seeing it ourselves in the not-too-distant future. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Transport Fever 2.
Thank you very much, and goodbye. I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.